Turn with us to the book of Ephesians, chapter number 6. Ephesians, chapter number 6. Our thoughts this week in Bible school have, have really been centered on strength, the strength of believers. And uh, this is natural, you know, to me that the Lord would just lay this on my heart. I, I feel it's the will of God. And uh, we're living in a day where the people of God, as we discussed, I was uh, able to attend a couple of the adult classes. As we're living in a day where it seems like Christians are getting more and more scared. True believers are getting more and more scared. Now, a lot of people will say they're a Christian if they've never been born again. They know the language. They know how to answer your questions. If you question them about their salvation, they know how to answer the questions. But few and far between are those that are really truly saved by the grace of God and know the Lord. I'm glad to be in the, among that number this morning. Amen. Uh, at the house of God and, and in the rest of the world, I'm glad to know my name's written in the Lamb's Book of Life. This, friend, puts a, a burden upon us as believers uh, that should, we should be strong Christians. Amen. I believe that with all my heart. I believe that we should be strong Christians for the Lord. Now, Paul is writing here in the book of Ephesians, and he gives some commandments in, in verse number 6, Children, obey your parents uh, in the Lord, uh, for this is right. Honor thy father and thy mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with thee, and thou mayest live long on the earth. And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Servants, be obedient to them that are your masters, according to the flesh, with fear and trembling, in singleness of your heart, as unto Christ. Not with eye service, as men pleasers, but as the servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart, with good will, doing service as to the Lord and not to men. Knowing that whatsoever good thing any man doeth, the same shall he receive of the Lord, whether he be bond or free. And ye masters do the same things unto them, forbearing, threatening, knowing that your master also in heaven, neither is there respect of persons with him. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Father, we thank you for the word of God this morning. Blessed, I pray. Help us to rightly divide the word of truth and speak to our hearts through the scripture. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to give you about, uh, about five things this morning, and we've got uh, things to do after it's all over with. But concentrate with me, if you will, just for a little bit on the word of God and being a strong Christian. We should be strong. The Bible says, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Amen. And I believe that that's exactly what it means. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And friend, there we should never say as a believer, I can't do that. My wife always told our children, I can't do anything, but I can do anything. That's right. Isn't that right? I, I, you know, and, and that's exactly right. If you can't do anything, then uh, you're incapable of it. But I'll tell you something. The Bible tells me I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. What does that mean? Can I... Can I be a witness for him? Yes, I can through Christ who strengthens me. Can I do whatever he asks me to do? Yes, I can according to his plan and his purpose. Moses said, uh, I'm unable to do this, Lord. And, and uh, God gave him the strength and God gave him a helper to come alongside him. And Aaron helped him out. But we can do all things. What do you think Noah must have thought when God told him, Noah, build an ark? What's an ark? It's a big... It's a big uh, uh, float that I will uh, have to, when, we, when we get a flood on this earth, you and your family will survive. And, and Noah said, I don't know nothing about it. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. This is a New Testament uh, promise, but it also goes back to the Old Testament. God's promises is for every believer. Amen. So Noah set out to build it. He could do all things through Christ who strengthens him. And friend, there's nothing today, you and I as believers, that we should not be able to accomplish for the Lord if it's in our hearts to do so. And that's the problem sometimes. Sometimes our service for the Lord is not in our hearts. Sometimes we let the cares of this life and the, and the things of this life overcome what God wants us to do. 
Friend, we're living in the last days. It's time we take the blinders off of our eyes. It's time that we stand for what's right and be strong Christians for the Lord. Amen. And I believe that. And, and we look at, at what we looked at in, in Bible school this week and we, we see that Gideon was a strong servant of God and that's what he was. He was ready to serve. Gideon got tired of, of having to hide to feed his family. Gideon was down by the wine press. He was down there threshing out his wheat so he could take it back and, and uh, have bread for his family. And why was he down there? Because the Midianites come and stole it every time they caught, caught it. They'd come take it away. And he got tired of it. And God said, you're a mighty man of valor. And even though he didn't feel like it, he said, you're a mighty man of valor. And Gideon was ready to serve God. Now, he did, he did put out a fleece. He did make sure it was God's perfect will. But I want to tell you something, friend. When it come time to do it, Gideon was uh, ready uh, uh, to serve God and was ready to do whatever God told him. He was ready to serve God in a dangerous time. Now you look around in this world today, everybody can say we're living in a dangerous time. This is perilous times, Timothy said. We're living in perilous times. But we can serve God, and we ought to be ready to serve God in perilous times. We ought to be ready to serve God when others fall away. I see Christians just half-heartedly serving God, Friend, that's, you gotta, you got to go with God. If you're going to be a true servant of Him, if you're going to amount to anything in your Christian life, you're going to have to go with the Lord. And, and if you see someone around you falling away from the things of God, amen, doesn't mean you have to, amen. It means you go ahead and serve God. I want, if I'm the last one standing by the help of God, I want to serve God, amen. Now, I'm not going to be, but I'd like to feel like that the way, and you should feel that way. If everybody around you goes to serve another God, it ought to be your, your strong heart's desire that you'll serve God. No matter what goes on around you, serve the Lord. Don't fall away because, hey, you don't have to go the way of the world because other believers are going the way of the world. The church don't have to go the way of the world because other churches are going the way of the world. Friend, we need to meet, get more godly and not more worldly. Amen. Oh, my friend, today we should be ready to serve in dangerous times when others fall away. And sometimes it seems we ought to, you know, we ought to always be ready to serve when it seems like nobody else cares. Sometimes it seems that way. But amen, by the help of God, we ought to determine in our heart that we're going to serve God. Amen. We're going to serve God. Number two, we need to be obedient to God as Ruth was obedient to God. Ruth was obedient. We don't have much time left, friend. We're nearing the coming of the Lord. Open your eyes. Lift up your, lift up your eyes. Redemption draweth nigh. Jesus is coming soon. I feel the urgency of the hour more than ever before that Jesus is coming soon. I see people in a different light. Listen, there's a lot of... <coughs> there's a lot of uh, people out there that, you know... Uh, that, that we may think are, are unattractive. We may think they go the way of the world and they're wicked. And we may think they're, uh, look at them and see, well, they're, you know, they're nothing, they're, they're bums or whatever we think. Let me tell you something. If they don't get saved, they're going to hell. We ought to see an urgency of people that are lost without God. Uh, we see, I see some of the strangest people you've ever seen in your life come in where I work. Miss Ashley, say amen. And we stand, we stand and look, and we stand and, and think, how in the world did that get that way? What happened? Did we run out of water? Did we run out of shampoo? Did we run out of scissors? Are all the razors gone? And did we run out of deodorant and soap? And we look, and, and that's disgusting sometimes to us. But I want you to know, I look at them, and even though that may be disgusting to me, 90% chance that they're lost without God. Matter of fact, probably a 99.9% .9 chance they're lost without God. Oh, my friend, we ought to have a burden. We ought to be, we ought to be obedient to serve the Lord because our time is growing short. We ought to be obedient because we may not have a second chance to witness to someone about the Lord. 
I have missed the opportunity that God has given me before to witness to someone and it never come around again. That's a horrible feeling. That's a horrible thing. God has opened doors for me and I'm, I'm going to tell you so you don't fall into this same trap. God's opened doors for me to, to witness to some individual and if I and, and there's been a time or two that I have that I have put it off. And I went back later and tried to do it and it was hollow and it was it was dead almost but because God wasn't dealing and God wasn't moving for him when God's moving is when you need to re- react to what God is telling you to do. Amen. And I'm preaching to me. I need to be ready to serve the Lord. I need to be ready because when it comes time to witness to someone I might not have another chance. Whatsoever he saith unto you, do it. The Bible commands us whatever he says to us to do it. I've been all excited this week and, and I fought the devil by the acre it seems like. But amen, by the help of God I want to serve him. By the help of God I want to preach his word. By the help of God I want to be bold and I want to be strong as a believer in him. And then we also we should be faithful as Nehemiah was faithful. He, God said you're going to rebuild the walls and it took a lot of process. It took a lot of time. But after the time was spent and after the plans were made, Nehemiah said, this task may be impossible to me, but through God all things are possible and I'm going to build the wall. Amen. God may give you something in your life that you think, I cannot do this. I cannot do what God's want me to do. I want to tell you something. If you're faithful to God, God will let you do anything He wants you to. He will allow you. He will equip you. And He will make it possible for you to do the impossible. Amen. We need to be faithful to God as Nehemiah was faithful to God. Now, friend, we have, we have let this thing of faithfulness, uh, we've let it go by the wayside, it seems like, sometimes. We need to listen. I cannot stress to you tonight, the, this morning, the importance of being faithful to God. I don't know what else to say, but be faithful. You know what I'm talking about. Be faithful to God. If you want God's blessings... If, listen, if you're going to do anything for God, you yourself need to be faithful to God. Amen. Be faithful. Be faithful as Nehemiah was faithful. And then we need to be bold as Peter was bold. Now, Peter got in a lot of trouble. But there's one thing that you can say about Peter that you can't say about, you know, you say about most people in Scripture, but it stands out in Peter. He was bold. He wasn't afraid to speak up. Now, sometimes he took one foot out of his mouth to insert the other, but he spoke up. And sometimes he got ahead of himself, but he wasn't afraid to step out. If there's ever been a day when we need in, in, in this world, when we need in our nation, when we need in our churches, it's someone that's not afraid to be bold. Amen? It's someone that's not afraid to stand and be bold for what they believe. It's, it, we need it. It's necessary, I believe, to our survival as believers and to our survival as a church, that we be bold in the, and, and, and tell others about Him. And listen, don't be afraid if somebody asks you a question to tell them the truth. Don't be afraid, just tell, just tell the truth. Amen. If it's according to Scripture, it may hurt, it may burn, it may sting. And it may make somebody mad at you, but tell the truth. Amen. Be bold. Listen, God always honors the truth. Amen. We ought to be bold as Peter uh, was bold. He was bold to witness. He was bold to warn others of the dangers of going to hell. Listen, we don't hear enough about that no more uh, as much as we should. But listen, boldly speaking, people that are lost without God are going to hell without God. People are going to die and perish in eternity wind up in the lake of fire because they've never trusted Jesus as their Savior and that's all that stands between them and going to heaven is just not trusting Jesus and we ought to be bold to warn people about the dangers of dying and going to hell without God if there's someone here this morning listen to me real closely now if there's someone here this morning that's never in your life bowed your head before an almighty God and admitted that you're a sinner, 
and, and, and confessed your sins to him and you believe the gospel that Jesus was born a virgin, that he lived a sinless life, that he died on the cross of Calvary, that he shed his blood for you and that he arose again, friend, I want to tell you something. If you don't ever remember that experience in your life, you're lost without God. And you'll spend eternity in hell. Well, preacher, it'll be all right. I'm, I've not done anyone no harm. I've not done anybody wrong. And I try to, I try to live right and be good to my neighbor and, and all of this. That won't get you to God. You must be born again. Amen. You must be born again. So we ought to be bold as Peter was to warn others of the danger of hell. Peter decided after it's all said and done, you know, Peter denied Christ. Could God ever use anyone that would deny him? He did. He did. He used Peter. You know what happened to Peter? Peter decided whose side he was going to be on. Peter decided that he wasn't going to, he wasn't going to straddle the fence no longer. He was on the side of Jesus, and God gave him power. And, and after God gave him power, you know, he, he was on the side of the Lord, and he just he said, I'm, I'm going to serve the Lord. Whose side are you on? Are you on the side of the world? Does the world pull you and you do whatever the world wants you to do? Or are you centered around the things of God? Are you centered around the house of God? Are you centered around what God wants in your life? Or are you just going on, let it be, whatever will be, will be. It will be. But while it's being what it is, people are going to hell without God. We need to be bold about, about the things of God. Then last of all, we need to be courageous as Esther was courageous. Man, it took a lot for Esther. You read, you read the story. Hey, listen, if you like to read mystery and if you like to read suspense, read the book of Esther. There was a lot going on, and it took a lot of courage to do what Esther did. And I'm not going through all the story, but she went before the king when it could have been her life. Let me tell you something, friend. We need to be courageous we need to have courage to stand. When nobody else says, God helping me as a preacher, I want to stand. Amen. I want to be courageous and stand for the whole counsel of God. Amen. I don't want to sidestep no scripture. Even though it might go against the grain, I don't want to sidestep the word of God. If it's in there, I want to be have the courage as a preacher to preach what's in the word of God. And by his help, amen, I, I, can, I want to continue to do that. Be courageous. You need to be courageous in the things of the Lord. <coughs> have courage to stand when others will not. And then you need to have courage even though it might cost you something. You stand for what's right and it's definitely going somewhere or the other. It's going to cost you something. It's cost people their job. It's cost people their families especially if they're in a foreign country that, that will ostracize and, and disown you if you become a Christian. It takes courage, friend, but we ought to be courageous Christians for the Lord. We ought to be strong in the power of His might. Let me ask you, are you, first of all, are you saved? Do you know your name's written in the Lamb's Book of Life? Number two, what kind of Christian are you? Are you a worldly Christian or are you a strong Christian? For the Lord. Everybody bow your head. No one looking around just for a moment. I'm through, y'all. Y'all preach me real quick. Amen. God, God got through with us real quick. I want to ask you, who in the building today would slip up your hand and say, Preacher, I have never accepted Christ as my Savior. I've never been born again by the grace of God. Is there one? Say, Preacher, pray for me. I'm lost. While we wait just a moment, is there one? God's dealing with your heart. God's dealing with somebody. God's dealing with your heart. You, you're sitting there, your heart's just a pounding, and, and uh, you think, well, I'll be embarrassed if I admit that. No, listen, there's nothing worth dying and going to hell over. You remember that. Is there one? Raise your hand and say, Preacher, pray for me. I'm lost. All right, what about you believers today? And everyone in the building living where you need to be with the Lord. I'll be the first to raise my hand and say, I, I want to get closer to God. I want to be more courageous than ever before. I wonder if there's a, a child of God. Raise your hand and say, Preacher, I want to be more courageous and I want to be a real Christian. God bless you. God bless you. Oh, God bless you. You can put them down.
Probably 70% of the hands in this building this morning raised said you. Some people didn't. That's all right. Amen. Maybe you're living as close to the Lord as you need to be. Or maybe you're fighting a battle with it. I want to tell you something. God in heaven, I'm going to keep praying. God in heaven's going to keep helping. Amen. And friend, I'll tell you, this church can do whatever we want to do by the help of God if we got courage to do so. Father, we thank you, Lord, again for the word of God this morning. I pray right now, God, you'd help us, Lord, to be courageous and strong in the power of thy might. And God, help us not to sidestep the truth, God, when it comes to witnessing to others. But God, help us to be bold. And Lord, we'll thank you for what you do. Bless every hand that was raised. Lord, for that one that's here this morning that might be lost without you, touch them with the sweet spirit of conviction. They might come to know you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for coming this morning. Amen. Anyone got anything on your heart before we do something different here? Anyone?